And now, an interview with Lorenzo Neal. Hello, my name is Max Strauss with ProInterviews.org. Facebook.com slash ProInterviews, Twitter.com slash ProInterviews, YouTube.com slash ProInterviews. Please be a part of ProInterviews. I'd like to welcome you to the interview with Lorenzo Neal and a special Q&A session with his son, Lorenzo Jr., Lorenzo was a fullback and linebacker at Fresno State University. He then entered the NFL Draft in 1993 and was drafted in the fourth round, 89th overall, by the New Orleans Saints. Throughout his 16-year career, he played for the Saints, Jets, Buccaneers, Titans, Bengals, Chargers, Ravens, and the Raiders. He paved the way for great running backs and was on an 11-year streak from 1997 to 2007 with his backfield commanding 1,000 yard plus rushers. He was the primary fullback for many teams and a fan favorite. He was defeated in his only Super Bowl appearance with the Titans. Let's get started with the interview. First, a brief Q&A session with his son. About a minute later will be an interview with Lorenzo. I hope you enjoy the collage below. What's your son's name? What grade are you in? I'm in seventh grade. You play football? Yeah, I play football. Are you a fullback like your dad, or? Um, I play a lot of stuff. Um, I do play fullback, but it's not like I'm a fullback. What's Father Lorenzo Neal think of that? Uh, he he wants me to play linebacker, and I do too. Are you gonna go to high school and play football there? And yeah. All right. That sounds like a plan. Lorenzo, are you there? All right, here we go, buddy. I'm back. Let's get it going. So uh, why do you really use Twitter? I think it's a great way for me to use Twitter. I think with now that we're in a, we're in a different age. With you young people now, social networking is the way of the future. And if individuals don't believe that, they're, they're vaguely mistaken. Uh, vastly mistaken. I look at social networking now that, you know, I've started doing Twitter. I've gotten over, you know, close to 4,000 people. And I really start getting involved, this young lady by the name of Tori, who's been an advocate of saying, hey, Lorenzo, start doing other stuff. She helps us with my, my bad food and, you know, coming in off and just a younger individual. Sometimes when you have a younger individual with some foresight and they start telling you there's different things you need to do to help protect your brand and the things that you want to do, and you get involved and you start to see it. Sometimes as, as adults and as parents, we think that the way of doing business is the same way, but sometimes we, we forget because what we thought that worked doesn't necessarily work now, especially if you look at newspaper, they'll be coming off to leave. If you look at, you know, look at the coupons and stuff, because now with the with touch of a button, by phones and internet and all the different things, now you can freaking deposit a check by just taking a picture with your phone. I mean, social networking and social media is the way of the future, and I advise you know, the, the, the generation of my generation is still that, you know, still young and still vibrant, but it's, things are evolving so much more faster now, and uh, especially with social networks, so definitely have to keep up with it. If uh, football didn't work out for you, what was your plan? I think that's a great question. I went to school and I majored in criminal justice, went to Fresno State, majored in criminal justice, and mine was in public communication. I like talking to people. I think it's got to be the gift of gap. But I really, I really look at, I look at individuals coming from you know a, a you know a small little community. I, I think if football wouldn't have worked, I would have definitely been working with juveniles or working with underprivileged children, and I still do that now. But because I, I believe that there's so many young kids and teenagers, they're not bad kids. They just make bad decisions, and I think that us as adults and as we have to be able to connect with our youth because our youth is the way of our future. And uh, I think that I would really be involved in that and still be involved in, in, in maybe coaching, but definitely love to be around youth. I think it keeps me young and vibrant, and it, it also makes me train. To, I, it makes me work out harder because now i got to see what i got to do in order to stay in front of these young boys, especially like my son. So uh, speaking of uh, children, who was your childhood star? <laughs> I had a childhood. 
from my childhood star, believe it or not, and I've always looked up to, you know, of course, look up my parents, you know, parents are great people, Glenn and Darlene, you know, and, uh, you know, been fortunate enough to, you know, they're just good parents that always kind of still need some value. But uh, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a athlete or entertainer, you always had to, I looked at Dan about, believe it or not, I'm a, I was a grown man playing a kid's game, getting the king's ransom, but I, I was able as a, as a youth my favorite team, and that's the San Diego Chargers. So uh, it's, it's really interesting to uh, see Dan Fouts and Chuck Muncy and Kellen Winslow when the, you know, James, you know, all those Bobby Duckworth, all the receivers, and, you know, Charlie Joyner, Wes Chandler, Charlie Joyner, all those guys were my guys. They were the guys that I was in the back when I run and I shot Danny Fouts, I'd back up and throw the ball. Those are Running the ball, I thought I was Chuck Muncy. When I'm catching the ball as a tight end, I was Kellen Winslow. So these athletes, growing up, it's still the same as the kids now. You dream as a young athlete. You dream through the Ladainian Thompsons, through the Drew Breeses, and the you know the the, the guys that now the, the Matt Shaw, the Gras, these different guys now. You dream to them. Every young athlete now. Dreams to the running back says, Man, I'm Adrian. You're in the backyard. You said, I'm Adrian Peterson. I looked at my son. He wears number 40. I'm like, Why is he wearing 41? I said, so you, you look at these certain guys, these certain young kids, they wear certain numbers. Why? You see a lot of 21 jerseys for the Indian Tom. You saw 22 jerseys back in the day, Emmett Smith. So I, 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 those guys, the, you know, the, the, you know, the old guys, the Dan Marinos, the Cherry Bradshaws, the, you know, the Michael Harris's and Dan Fouts, Kellen Winslow, all those guys. Those were my, those are the guys that I looked up to. Uh, you know, Broadway Joe, Joe Montana. Those guys kept me dreaming. And I, 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 I and that's why I, I you know, I, I, I advise the youth to keep dreaming and keep dreaming. And that's why, you know, what, you know, this is, you know, kind of what leading up to this, and I kind of want to make sure I direct this conversation the right way. Max and Think about it. All these young kids we drink. I, I told you who was my the different athletes that I looked up to. Think about these athletes now that you have, the Vince Youngs and all these different things that happen. Some young kid in the inner city, some young kid that plays quarterback, some of you know the community, you gotta realize, even though we don't feel as if we have to be role models, this is the reason why because these young kids look up to Vince Young and look up to certain guys, the Brett Farms and, you know, the Edward Davey and Thomas and these different guys, the Philip Rivers, the Peyton Manning. If the things that you do can reflect the outcome of some of the young, these young kids that dream. The way that you carry yourself on and off the field can determine how you as you, you, Max, as you, how you, how you digress or, or progress as, as, as you turn into a, you know, a, 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 a you know, a man, a leader. Um, now, so yeah, yeah, you're in high school, but these are some of the athletes and the things that you're around that's going to help you become a better person. Also, look at it and think, wow. And I, I, that's why I, I, that's why I challenge the athletes, the student athletes, the young, the youth, and all these people. People are watching you. Even even like the youth watch the professional. Trust me, there's kids there that go to high school. That the young kid in Pop Warner or Pee Wee, he goes to look at that high school scene and someone's looking up to him. It's that young kid still playing Pop Warner and the Pee Wee guy says, man, watch my older brother. Wow, look how he runs the ball. I'm looking up to him. It's an endless cycle. And how do you leave your legacy? How do you be that leader? And that's why I'm challenging you, Max, as a young man, to get the message out there, to get it out there the right way and say, guess what, young youth? We're role models, too. Guess what? We're leaders, too, because there's some kid that's going to listen to your, your radio show, the things that you're doing on the Internet and all the stuff that you're doing right now, and said, wow, how did you get to interview, hopefully, a future Hall of Famer? How did you get to interview Lorenzo Neal, you know, the 16-year, 17-year vet in the National Football League, who's on all the Comcast for? How did you make this happen? Why? Because it was a thought. It was a belief. It was you believing in yourself and say, I'm reaching out. I'm chasing greatness. I commend you, young man. Wow, that's a long answer. I like that though. Makes me feel good. So, uh, more into like your football career. Uh, what was your uh, high school football experience like? You know, my, my high school football career was it was it was it was kind of a 
I, 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 uh, I, I, you know, had average 16 tackles a game my senior year. I was California happy of the year and, and uh, had over a thousand yards rushing. It was, it was, I was one of those guys that just, you know, just worked hard. I worked hard and, and continued to, to push myself and uh, it, it, it paid off. I, I'm a strong believer in hard work pays off. So, uh, did you play any other sports in high school? Yeah, I was a wrestler. I, I wrestled as well, and I did track and field. Mm-hmm. And I was, uh, you know, state champion in wrestling. And, you know, a pretty good wrestler. So I had a, a, a scholarship in both sports. I could have went to a, any school and wrestled. I was, uh, like I said, California State athlete of the California State athlete of the year. So, in the whole state of California, I was number one athlete of the, you know, uh, class, you know, so for my class, so I was a pretty, you know, I was a pretty good athlete. I worked hard. I wasn't the best athlete, but what made me, I think, the deep back was just never quitting. You might be a better, you might be stronger, you might be faster, but you're not going to outwork me. So um, those are some of the things that I got by on my football as well as wrestling. The third quarter came around, I was better conditioned. My strength started to pick up, and I tried to t- pay attention to the detail. Because when all else fails, and all athletes, you're going to, I advise all athletes, young athletes, there's going to come a time when everything is equal. Meaning that the guy's just as strong as you, the guy's just as fast as you, as tough as you, as not tougher. Then it comes down to one thing, basic fundamentals, and it comes down to heart and desire. And those are the things that I was always, my father instilled within me, to hey, Keep working. He would tell me, you're a nil. No one can beat you. You're a nil. Even though he knew that it was. But he, when I would look at my father, he would look at me and say, you're a nil. Come on. You're made from, you come from me. And he would look at me and tell me that. And I knew at that moment, I couldn't lose because I couldn't let him lose. My father made me not lose because I did not want to let him down. That's why I always would get up in the morning and he would say, right. When I'd hear him say, rise and shine. And he'd make me go run before I went to school. And when I come home from school, he kept pushing me. And he took me one day, he drove me, and I was like, Dad, you're pushing me too hard. You're pushing me too hard. He took me, drove me up to the top of the mountain, walked me to the edge of the hill, and he pushed me, and I blew. That's the analogy I like to use for the youth. Take them to the top of the hill. Take them to the top of the mountain, and hopefully the parents will push them, and they'll fly. Not literally, but, you know, on the other level, physically speaking. Your father had the most impact on your playing football and everything in your career? Probably without a doubt. He was definitely a guy that was always going to push you and make you uh, make yourself uncomfortable. He made me uncomfortable. And I, I think that even sometimes in, in Max, this is, you know, I'm glad we have this interview, and that's why I feel like I made you for reaching out. Because sometimes even when, you know, you're at boarding school and you're not around your, your parents and your family, and you wonder why. Because sometimes they want what's best for you, and sometimes you can't see what's best. You know, sometimes you're so we as humans, we get so far in the forest, we can't see the trees. And sometimes you're like, why are you doing this? Why are you putting me away? Why am I here? Because they want what's best. You know, sometimes we we don't see it, and you know, and hopefully there'll come a day when you're like, hey man, I appreciate this. It's, it's helped me make my own way. Made me make some decisions. You know, three things max that I try to push. Choices, vision, consequences, and uh, you know, it, you know, it, it, it's it's tough, especially being such a youngster. How hard was it to choose uh, Fresno State for uh, college? It was hard. I know that it's, you know it's a good school. Uh, you know, you're known in the community. It's what you know. You're a point up from a town thirty miles south of that called Leemore, California. Smaller, smaller school, smaller, you know. And instead of going to the big school and being a big fish in a big pond, why not go to a smaller school and be a big fish in a small pond and uh, become one of the most elite athletes there? And I think that it gave me a, a chance to really fulfill a lot of my needs, meaning that I got to wrestle, I got to do, do football, I got to play linebacker, I got to play fullback, I got to do a lot of different things that I think about I went to another school that's ran like a machine. Sometimes you don't get to do the things that, you know, that, 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 that uh, necessarily that you want. So uh, I thought the Fresno State was a great experience for me. With, you know, a, uh, you know, a, a great university, a great institution. It just uh, met some great people on the way, and uh, it helped mold me into the person I am now. 
What's your favorite memory from uh, Fresno State, though? Uh, you know, some of the favorite memories is just, uh, you know, being an All-American in wrestling. I think it's just meeting, you know, being able to be coached by a man, Jeff Sweeney, a, a legacy and a, 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 an icon in Fresno. Uh, being coached by, you know, Jeff Sweeney, a great man, a, a great leader. Also, uh, Dennis Delito, my uh, wrestling coach. I think those were those two men, you know, I still I still stay in touch, you know, you know, I still hang out, still talk to these guys, so they my life. What was the most important thing you learned at Fresno State that helped you in the NFL? I think just determination. I think we you know, it's I think we were Fresno State just, you know, not quitting. I mean, you're wrestling and you're going out there with other men, you can't blame it on anybody quarterback, you can't blame your lineman. It's just another guy out there. You and another college student and you're wrestling and you're, you're you just you can quit or you can give up or you win. And I think that rest, what wrestling has done for me as a person, just the determination how to be disciplined. I think that it, it, it's a sport that doesn't get its just dues, but I think it's wrestling. Um, and I, I don't think I don't I think when I take most of them, not Fresno State itself, but it's the people that made up Fresno State. But what is the institution if there's nobody there to teach? What is the college if there's no one there to lead? You have to find yourself with good people and surround yourself there. I say people realize sometimes they think, oh, I'll go to the University of Notre Dame and all that. Yes, there's rich tradition there, but it's the individuals that make up Notre Dame. People don't know, you know what? You don't know Notre Dame's the brand. People do. And that's what it's about. So I've been able to, you know, be blessed, fortunate to have the people around me uh, to help uh, facilitate the needs for one of the things that I have in life. Now moving on more to, like, NFL careers, uh, what was your uh, draft day experience like? Yeah, the, draft, the draft day was fun, man. You know, you get drafted and you're young, you know, go to Fresno State, you, 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 you know, you, you want to see where you're going to get drafted. And, you know, 87 pick overall, and it was, it was a great experience for me and my family, and uh, it was great. Throughout your career, you switched throughout numerous teams. Was it harder to fi keep finding a new home and everything? Or? Yeah, because you, you just go into your, you, you do your job. You know, you, you have a job to do, and you, yeah, you don't, yeah, sometimes you, I think it's experience. That's what makes, I think that's what makes my career so uh, unique, I think, because I was able to experience a lot of different things and different places, different cultures. You were nominated to the Pro Bowl numerous times. Uh, what was that like? It was great. Being non nominated to the Pro Bowl is great. I mean, you know, that's the only thing on fullback. They, they don't bring, you know, linebackers and quarterbacks. They bring three and four of these different positions. But the fullback position, they only bring one. So you, you have to be the best at what you do. So uh, that was great. What was one of the best experiences of your career? And did you have a best friend throughout your entire NFL career? Yeah, you know, I always had great friends throughout my career. You know, Leon Hosani and, you know, and Eddie George, Blaine Bishop, uh, thank you. You know, uh, Eddie George, you know, I still talk to you. You know, Damian Thomas and, you know, the, the Ray Lewis. All these guys, and I think that I'll always have a relationship, you know, uh, regardless of whether I play football or not. These guys are just great men. You know, uh, Drew Brees and all these guys I used to talk to, and uh, they, they're just good people. 1997 through 2007, you were recognized as, like, the best lead blocker in the NFL. Um, you had 11 straight running backs with over 1,000 yards. How did you remain consistent in different environments? Uh, everything you do is your name. It's going to be reflected by it, so. I just tried to be consistent and tried to just do my job. So no matter who was, you know, behind or whatever, it was just about focusing on my job. Mm -hmm. I, was, and I was pretty lucky to go out for some great backs. Uh, Corey Dillon, Eddie George, Asia Morrell, Paul Scott, Warren Dunn. It makes my job a little easier.
if you could look back on your career and have and you had to choose one play to define your career, what would it be? Uh, you know what? I don't know if it was one play to define your career because I think that there's no one play in any one career to define a career. Because I'm, I'm a strong believer that greatness isn't given; it's earned, and it's about your destiny and it's about your longevity. I think that's how that's how you prove to be great is how long you're doing something with consistency. So if you if you look at one, there's always guys that say, hey, he had a great year, that was a great throw. Okay. But does that define greatness? Greatness is consistency, doing something over and over and over again. So I think that I'd be remiss if I said it was one play that defined who I was as a football player. I think it was the longevity and the consistency. That's what makes people great. You were also nominated to the NFL 2000s All-Decade Team. What was that like? Uh, you know, it was an honor. It was an honor to be nominated to the All-Decade Team to have your peers, you know, that's the decade. The decade is, you know, 10 years. And to, to be on the All-Decade Team and to be the one for that decade, uh, 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 I'm humbled. I mean, it's it, it, a... Uh, I'm so blessed, privileged, and honored to uh, to be on that all-decade team, and um, I'm grateful, grateful, thankful. Do you have a nickname? Well, you know, I've been, some of my some of my teammates call me Rad Man, you know, Low Daddy, uh, all kinds. Mm-hmm. I kind of like Rad Man, as my buddy Corey Whistle would call me Rad Man. That all I do is leave with my head like a little Ram Man, that cartoon character. But uh, I've had some pretty cool names. So, low, low daddy, Ram Man. Do you have a favorite quote or something that's helped you get through your career? Favorite quote or favorite thing? Uh, you know what? It's a bunch of them. I have so many of them. I, I, I think that I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a strong believer in that. Working well, wishing won't. If you work, it will happen. Wishing won't. Too many people say, I wish I had a million bucks. I wish I could do this. Well, that's just a wish. But if you work, working well, it will happen. Wishing won't. And if you're working well, wishing won't. And if you, if you do that, this is all anything you can remember. If you shoot for the sun, if you land, if you miss, you might just land on the moon. So set your... Set your that's your, that's your whole time. That's your standard time. And uh, like I said, shoot for the sun. If you miss, you might land on the ground. What's the best advice you've ever received? The best advice I've ever received was from my grandmother. She told me she worked in the fields and she was a great lady. She was 98 years, 96 years old when she died. She was uh, she was a, worked in the field. She said the, she told me uh, when I graduated, she said, well, that's the only advice I can tell you. Never take a vacation when the boss is around. I said, why not, Grandma? She said, they realize how much they don't need you. Because she is one of those ladies that never would think she had my, she had my uncle on a, on a Wednesday. She was back on work on a Friday. Uh, that's what life's about, man. What it's about. All right. If you could describe yourself as any ice cream flavor, what would you be and why? What would you describe your dad as? For someone who wants to play in the NFL, what what's the best advice you can give them? I, I think the best advice you want to play in the National League is just like, what are you willing to sacrifice? 
make yourself uncomfortable. Gotta work. Is there anything you want to tell fans or that we haven't talked about? No, I was good. You know, put this stuff here on words and uh, let's, you know, we're, we're definitely going to stay in touch and uh, we'll keep you know, we can do a lot of other things together down the road, buddy. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Lorenzo Neal. I greatly appreciate it and the readers will also, or listeners. No worries. You'd be blessed. Thank you for listening to the interview with NFL star and hopefully future Hall of Famer Lorenzo Neal. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you leave your comments below. Please check out my website, proreviews.org, for more interviews. Like the Facebook page at facebook.com slash proreviews. Follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash proreviews. And subscribe to me on YouTube at youtube.com slash proreviews. Thanks again for listening. Stay tuned for more. Feel free to contact me.